Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mindset Matters, the courage to continue. This podcast is meant to bring hope and inspiration to your day. You and I have been born into a unique time in history. The command to guard our heart and mind has never been more vital to our mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Let's guide each other on this journey. If you have a hero heart story from your corner of the world that you would like to share on this podcast, please send it to the email address, mindsetmatterspodcast, numeral one, at gmail.com. If you know of someone who would benefit from uplifting content, please share this podcast. Please visit our website, mindsetmatters.buzzsprout.com. Now please join me for an uplifting hero heart story. Prepare to be captivated by a truly extraordinary story as we unravel the enigmatic tale of Wojtek the Bear. A cub rescued from the Iranian mountains during World War II, Wojtek became not just a soldier's companion, but an honorary soldier himself. His heartwarming journey is a testament to the unbreakable bonds forged amidst the chaos of war and the astonishing role he played in boosting the spirits of the soldiers. Join us on a heartfelt journey through the life and legacy of Boytek the Bear, a symbol of resilience and camaraderie that transcends time and borders. Welcome to Mindset Matters, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the life of one such individual. Well, actually, this individual is an animal. This is episode three, The Courage to Be a Comrade, the Hero Heart of Wojtek the Bear. Settle in for a gripping tale of courage, resilience, and unwavering faith. Most of us are probably familiar with black bears, brown bears, or grizzly bears, and the polar bear. But our hero story is about a Syrian brown bear, so let's learn a little bit more about this type of bear. Meet the captivating Syrian brown bear, a subspecies of the majestic Eurasian brown bear that boasts both a unique identity and a perilous status in its natural habitat. This charismatic creature calls the heart of the Middle East and West Central Asia, especially the enchanting region around the Caucasus Mountains, its home. With its relatively modest size and a vulnerable existence, the Syrian brown bear's tail is one of resilience in the face of adversity. The Syrian brown bear is a true masterpiece of nature's palette, sporting a fur coat that's as diverse as the landscapes it calls home. Picture a canvas of light brown and straw-colored fur with an intriguing twist. If you look closely, you'll notice the hair on their withers, that elevated region near the shoulders, is like a painter's brushstroke of gray-brown, often contrasting with the rest of the body like a bold streak of creativity. It's almost like Mother Nature herself decided to add a dash of uniqueness to each individual bear. Now let's talk altitude. These lighter shades tend to show up more often when these bears venture to higher altitudes, as if the very air they breathe has imbued their fur with a touch of ethereal beauty. But that's not all. Their legs, in a bit of artistic contrast, tend to be darker than the rest of their body, like the bass notes in a symphony of colors. And here's a fascinating tidbit. Among all bears in the world, the Syrian brown bear stands alone with its white claws, a distinctive feature that sets it apart in the grand tapestry of bear diversity. Now, in the realm of size, these bears are not the giants of their family. 
Adult males, both skulls measuring approximately 30 to 40 centimeters or 12 to 16 inches. And while they may not tip the scales like their larger relatives, they still command attention, weighing up to 550 pounds or 250 kilograms and measuring from about 101 to 140 centimeters or 40 to 55 inches from nose to tail. In the world of bears, they're the embodiment of compact power and natural elegance. In the days of yore, the Syrian brown bear's kingdom spanned from the rolling hills of Turkey to the distant deserts of Turkmenistan. But as time unfurled its pages, a somber tale of vanishing territory began to take shape. Today, the Syrian brown bear's once mighty reign in Syria, its very namesake, is but a whisper of the past— possibly absent altogether. Its presence has also faded from the lands of Israel, Jordan, Palestine, and the Sinai Peninsula, leaving behind echoes of a time when bears roamed freely. Yet in the face of this dwindling empire, pockets of resilience remain. The Syrian brown bear, like a mythological creature, still holds on in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Turkey, and Turkmenistan. It's a testament to nature's ability to endure. In Turkey, the bear's favorite hideaways include the enchanting Mediterranean belt forests, where sunlight filters through the leaves in a dance of shadows. It's equally at home among the deciduous and conifer forests of the Black Sea region, a lush paradise in the north. Venture deeper into the hinterlands of the Black Sea, and you'll find the bear exploring the oak and pine forests where nature's grandeur knows no bounds. And let's not forget the East Anatolian dry forests where the bear adapts to a tougher, arid existence. The altitudes in these habitats range from a modest 500 meters to a staggering 2,700 meters, offering the bear a breathtaking playground that spans from the lowlands to the skies. Now, hop over to Iran, where the bear's presence is a testament to nature's resilience. You'll find it in the central Alborz protected area, a region that lies to the south of the Caspian Sea. It's also a frequent guest in the towering Zagros Mountains, where altitude is its friend, and northern aspects with access to water resources are its preferred haunts. It was here, in Iran, that Wojtek was found. It was on April 8, 1942, that the cub was stumbled upon in the Iranian mountains by a group of Polish prisoners of war. These men, who were en route from a Siberian gulag to Alexandria, Egypt, made the unexpected discovery in the rugged terrain of Iran. The cub was given to the charge of a little boy who ran into the Polish two corps at a railway station in Hamadan, Iran. Let's learn a little background on the Polish Two Corps. The Polish Two Corps is an illustrious and storied military formation with a rich history that resonates with valor, sacrifice, and unwavering determination. It stands as a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Polish people and their resolute commitment to defending their homeland and the values they hold dear. Formed during the darkest days of World War II, the Polish Corps II emerged as a beacon of hope for a nation caught in the maelstrom of war. Composed of Polish soldiers who had escaped the clutches of Nazi-occupied Poland and Soviet-occupied eastern territories, the Corps was a remarkable amalgamation of diverse backgrounds, united by a common cause to fight for the freedom and sovereignty of their homeland. This military force was led by the legendary General Anders, a charismatic and determined leader who inspired his troops with unwavering patriotism and a vision of a free and independent Poland. The soldiers of the Polish Two Corps displayed unparalleled courage and resilience, enduring unimaginable hardships during their arduous journey from the Soviet Union to the battlefields of North Africa and Italy. In the deserts of Tobruk, the hills of Monte Cassino, and the fields of Ancona, the Polish Corps too etched their names in the annals of history through acts of valor that left an indelible mark. They fought with unyielding bravery, often outnumbered and facing formidable adversaries, 
earning the respect of their allies and the admiration of their enemies. The image of the Polish Quartu's crimson and white flag, emblazoned with a distinctive eagle, waving proudly in the midst of battle, became a symbol of hope and resistance, not only for the Poles, but for all who yearned for a world free from tyranny. Their legacy endures in the hearts and minds of those who remember their sacrifice, their unwavering spirit, and their contribution to the Allied victory in World War II. Today, the Polish Quartu is celebrated as a symbol of Poland's resistance and the enduring human spirit. Their story serves as a reminder that even in the darkest of times, the unbreakable bond of a nation's people can overcome adversity and illuminate the path to freedom and justice. The Polish Tukor is a testament to the power of determination, unity, and the unshakable belief in the values for which they fought and triumphed. Now back to the story. It was on that fateful day, the 8th of April, 1942, at the railroad station in Hamadan, Iran, that the Polish soldiers had an unexpected encounter that would leave an indelible mark on their hearts. As they stood there, the young Iranian boy appeared, cradling a bear cub in his arms. The cub's mother had fallen victim to the mercilessness of hunters, leaving the young creature orphaned and vulnerable. Amidst the group of Polish soldiers and civilians, one young woman stood out, 18-year-old Irina, affectionately known as Inka. She happened to be the great-niece of an esteemed general. Inka was captivated by the sight of the bear cub and felt an immediate connection. Her passion for this newfound furry friend was so strong that it stirred action among the ranks. Irina's determination led Lieutenant Anatol Tarnowicki to make a decision that would change the course of their journey. He decided to purchase the young bear, marking the beginning of an extraordinary adventure for this little bear cub and the Polish Corps, too. For the next three months, the young bear became a cherished resident of a Polish refugee camp established in the vicinity of Tehran. It was during this time that the bear received a name that would resonate throughout history, Wojtek, W-O-J-T-E-K. The moniker Wojtek holds deep significance, serving as a nickname, a diminutive form, or a hypocorism of the ancient Slavic name Wojta, which translates to Happy Warrior. This name, still echoing through the lands of Poland, carried with it a sense of resilience and bravery, qualities that would soon be embodied by the bear himself. Wojtek's early days were not without challenges. He struggled with swallowing, and his makeshift feeding solution involved sipping condensed milk from a repurposed vodka bottle. As time went on, his culinary repertoire expanded to include fruits, marmalade, honey, and syrup. However, it was a rather unexpected indulgence that truly captured his heart. Beer. This frothy beverage quickly became his favorite, a unique preference among his comrades. In an even more surprising twist, Wojtek developed a penchant for smoking, or perhaps more accurately munching on, cigarettes, and relished sipping on his morning coffee. Beyond his quirky eating habits, Wojtek possessed a playful spirit. He reveled in spirited wrestling matches with the soldiers, and even learned the art of saluting when greeted, a gesture that epitomized his camaraderie with the troops. In his early months, the bear found warmth and solace amidst the folds of woolen blankets and the comforting embrace of soldier uniforms. But as he grew, so did his need for more spacious accommodations. First, it was a bathtub that served as his bed, and later, a trunk. Yet despite these creative attempts to provide him with a cozy sleeping spot, Wojtek the bear, with a heart as big as his frame, had a clear preference. He wanted to sleep alongside his Polish comrades. But Wojtek wasn't just a snuggle enthusiast. He had a playful side, too. His favorite pastime was wrestling, and he approached this sport with both fierceness and fairness. Sometimes he'd graciously let his opponents win, a gesture of camaraderie that endeared him even more to those who knew him. When he wasn't engaged in friendly bouts, Wojtek loved to embark on long walks, exploring the world around him with a sense of wonder. And when the day got a bit too warm, there was nothing he enjoyed more than taking a refreshing cold bath. 
a fantastic swimmer and diver, he made quite the splash. Imagine the scene near the Adriatic coast where his company was stationed. Wojtek couldn't resist the allure of the shimmering waters. He'd often take a quick dip, emerging like a surprise guest among the bathing locals, causing a delightful mixture of panic and confusion. For Wojtek, life was an adventure, and every day was a new opportunity to bring joy and laughter to those around him. Wojtek's military career wasn't just about forging bonds with fellow soldiers. He had a knack for making friends among the animal kingdom as well. One of his most cherished companions was a Dalmatian dog, the loyal sidekick of a British liaison officer. Their playful antics and spirited wrestling matches became a source of endless joy and entertainment for everyone in their company. The sight of a bear and a dog engaging in such camaraderie was a heartwarming testament to the unifying power of friendship amidst the tumult of war. However, not all of Wojtek's encounters with animals ended on a cheerful note. There was an incident that unfolded on the outskirts of an Iranian town where the 22nd Company had set up camp. In a curious moment, Wojtek approached a grazing horse, perhaps with an offer of friendship in his heart, but the frightened horse, caught in a fit of panic, lashed out with a series of kicks, striking Wojtek on the head and neck. The bear staggered under the unexpected assault, his growls and groans seemingly a protest against the injustice of such a rowdy and undisciplined horse. Lesson learned. From that point on, Wojtek wisely steered clear of any encounters with donkeys and horses, his adventurous spirit tempered by the wisdom of experience. It was a reminder that even in the midst of wartime, there were life lessons to be learned and friendships to be cherished, whether they had fur, feathers, or a human heart. While Wojtek may have had his share of quirky habits, he wasn't just the mischievous mascot of the Polish soldiers. He was a full-fledged member of their unit, taking cues from his human comrades in some truly remarkable ways. Picture this. Wojtek the bear, with an uncanny penchant for imitation, eagerly engaging in marching drills with the soldiers. Sometimes you'd catch him walking upright on his powerful hind legs, a sight both surreal and endearing. And that wasn't all. He even learned to salute the officers, a gesture that blended humor and camaraderie. But Wojtek wasn't just a clever mimic. He was genuinely helpful around the camps. His incredible strength made him a valuable asset, aiding the soldiers by shouldering the burden of heavy crates and lending his brawn to lift the load. Yet it's essential to remember that this wasn't just play. It was preparation for something greater. As war raged on, the time came for the Polish soldiers, Wojtek included, to heed the call of duty once more. Orders arrived for them to join forces with the British in a campaign that would take them to the heart of Italy. As word of this extraordinary bear spread, he became a captivating attraction, drawing the admiration of both military personnel and civilians alike. In no time, he evolved into an unofficial mascot for all the units stationed in close proximity. Together with the 22nd Company, Wojtek embarked on an adventure that took him across the map, from Iraq to Syria, Palestine, and Egypt, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of all who crossed his path. As the days turned into months and the campaigns pressed on, Wojtek continued to grow, transforming from a curious cub into a robust and imposing figure. By the time the Battle of Monte Cassino loomed on the horizon, his weight had surged to an impressive 90 kilograms, or 200 pounds. This transformation reflected not just his physical stature, but also the deep bonds he had forged with his human companions during their shared journey through the trials of war. As the Polish II Corps charted its course from Egypt, a new chapter in Wojtek's incredible journey unfolded. The Corps received new orders, directing them to join forces with the esteemed British Eighth Army in the unfolding Italian campaign. However, there was a formidable ox- obstacle on the horizon. The strict regulations governing the British transport ship slated to carry them to Italy explicitly prohibited the presence of mascots and pet animals. So, they got creative. 
The first step was to officially enlist Wojtek as a soldier. This might seem like a bizarre administrative task, but it was a crucial one. With his newfound status, Wojtek was assigned a rank and a serial number, and he was officially inducted into the 22nd Artillery Supply Company. This creative move allowed the soldiers to circumvent regulations that would have otherwise prevented Wojtek from boarding the ship. With the paperwork sorted, the soldiers faced the logistical challenge of getting Wojtek onto the vessel. The young bear had grown significantly since his cub days, and he was no longer the size of a little plush toy. To manage this, they used a forklift to hoist him onto the ship's deck, an operation that must have been quite the spectacle. Once on board, Wojtek adapted remarkably well to ship life. He had his own quarters, consisting of a makeshift wooden crate filled with hay, which served as his bed. The soldiers ensured he had plenty of food and water, and Wojtek became a beloved and familiar sight on the ship. But perhaps the most heartwarming aspect of this story is the way Wojtek was treated by the crew and fellow soldiers. Far from being a mere mascot, he was considered a part of the team. The crew members and soldiers alike formed bonds with the bear, sharing meals, stories, and companionship. As the ship sailed through the Mediterranean, Wojtek's presence served as a reminder of the unbreakable spirit and camaraderie that can emerge in the most trying of circumstances. Then, the Polish two corps arrived in Italy. The Battle of Monte Cassino was one of the most pivotal and grueling engagements of World War II, and it was in this intense crucible that Wojtek the Bear played a remarkable role. The battle took place between January 17 and May 18, 1944, and it centered around the Monte Cassino Monastery, a historic hilltop fortress in Italy. The Allies, including the Polish Two Corps, to which Wojtek belonged, were locked in a bitter struggle to break through the formidable German defenses and gain control of the vital road to Rome. Wojtek's role in this battle was both symbolic and practical. Symbolically, he was a living embodiment of the resilience and camaraderie of the Polish soldiers. He served as a source of inspiration and morale-boosting spirit in a time of tremendous hardship. His presence amidst the chaos of war provided a sense of normalcy and a reminder of the humanity that persisted in the face of adversity. Practically, Wojtek played a unique role in the logistics of the battle. As a member of the 22nd Artillery Supply Company, he was accustomed to carrying heavy crates of artillery shells during training exercises. This unusual skill set became unexpectedly valuable during the Battle of Monte Cassino. As the soldiers prepared for the battle, Wojtek assisted them by carrying crates of artillery shells and ammunition to the front lines. It's said that he displayed remarkable strength and courage, working alongside his human comrades to ensure that the crucial supplies reached their destinations. One particularly iconic image from the battle depicts Wojtek carrying a crate of mortar rounds, a powerful testament to the Bears' contributions to the war effort. His actions weren't just a sideshow, they were a vital part of the logistical support that kept the Polish soldiers equipped and fighting. Despite the thundering artillery, the deafening explosions, and the constant danger, Wojtek continued to play his role with unwavering dedication. His actions were a powerful symbol of the unbreakable bonds between soldiers and their mascot, as well as a reminder that even in the darkest of times, the human spirit can find solace and strength in the most unexpected companions. Ultimately, the Battle of Monte Cassino ended in Allied victory, and the strategic significance of the triumph cannot be overstated. Wojtek the Bear, who had witnessed and participated in this monumental struggle, became a living legend, a symbol of courage, camaraderie, and the enduring spirit of those who fought on the front lines of history. Such unwavering service on the battlefield did not go unnoticed. Wojtek's remarkable contribution led to a well-deserved promotion to the rank of corporal. In a testament to his endearing popularity, the image of a bear carrying an artillery shell was officially adopted as the emblem of the 22nd Company. 
this iconic symbol embodied the enduring spirit of camaraderie and resilience forged amidst the trials of war. With the culmination of World War II in 1945, Wojtek's journey took an unexpected turn. He, along with the rest of the 22nd Company, was transported to the picturesque region of Berwickshire, Scotland. Their base was nestled at Winfield Airfield, situated on Sunwick Farm, just a stone's throw away from the charming village of Hutton in the Scottish borders. Here, amidst the rolling hills and quaint countryside, Boytek's legend would take root once more. In this new and foreign land, Boytek quickly captured the hearts of the local populace and gathered the attention of the media. The Polish-Scottish Association was so moved by his presence that they bestowed upon him the honor of becoming an honorary member. After the conclusion of World War II, the Polish II Corps, to which Wojtek belonged, faced the challenge of finding a suitable home for their beloved bear mascot. With peace restored, they couldn't continue to keep him within the ranks of a military unit. So in November 1947, Wojtek was transferred to the Edinburgh Zoo in Scotland. It was a new chapter in his life, one that would be far different from the battlefields and camps he had known. Life in the zoo offered Wojtek some semblance of peace and comfort. He became a popular attraction, capturing the hearts of visitors who marveled at his unique story. Yet, for a bear who had grown up among soldiers and lived a life of activity and companionship, the confines of a zoo enclosure must have been a significant adjustment for him. Tragically, on December 2, 1963, Wojtek passed away at the age of approximately 21 years. The exact cause of his death remains uncertain, but it is believed to have been related to the ailments and health challenges that often afflict aging bears in captivity. The news of Wojtek's passing was met with sorrow and tributes from around the world. He had become a symbol of resilience, camaraderie, and the indomitable spirit of those who served during wartime. His legacy lives on through books, documentaries, and memorials, including a bronze statue in the Polish town of Zagon, where he had spent his early years with the Polish soldiers. Wojtek's death marked the end of an extraordinary chapter in history but his memory endures as a testament to the remarkable bonds that can form between humans and animals. His story continues to inspire and serve as a reminder of the power of friendship. Wojtek's legacy, like a tapestry woven with reverence and remembrance, extends far and wide, touching the hearts of people across different lands. These tributes, each a testament to his remarkable journey, serve as poignant reminders of his indomitable spirit. In the heart of London, the Imperial War Museum bears a solemn plaque, a humble token of remembrance to the soldier bear who defied convention and became a symbol of courage. Nearby, in the Sikorsky Museum, sculptor David Harding immortalized Wojtek's story and a piece of art that speaks volumes. Venturing further afield to Wheelsby Woods in Grimsby, a wooden sculpture stands as a silent guardian, paying homage to the bear who ventured far from his homeland. But it was in Krakow, Poland, that Wojtek's memory found a home in Jordan Park. In 2014, on the 70th anniversary of the Battle of Monte Cassino, a statue of Wojtek was unveiled, a testament to his enduring legacy and the valor of the soldiers he stood beside. Across the seas in the heart of Edinburgh, another tribute was cast in bronze. Created by Alan Beatty, Harriet, this statue depicts Wojtek and a fellow Polish army soldier, locked in stride as they journey together. An accompanying relief tells the tale of Wojtek's odyssey from Egypt to Scotland, a journey that resonates with the spirit of camaraderie and resilience. In the Scottish borders, where Wojtek once roamed alongside Polish troops at Winfield Camp in 1946, a statue now stands proudly in Duns. A gift from the Polish town of Zegun, Dunn's twin town, it was unveiled on a poignant day in April 2016, 72 years after the Battle of Monte Cassino. In Poznan, Poland, a street now bears the name Ulika Kaprala Wojta, Corporal Wojtek Street, leading the way to the Poznan New Zoo. The city honors its connection to the bear who touched hearts across borders. 
and in the Poznan New Zoo, a wooden statue, funded by Christina Wojcurek, the author of a Polish book about Wojtek, stands as a living tribute to the bond between humans and animals, a bond that transcends time and place. In the ancient town of Cassino, Italy, a marble statue of Wojtek stands tall, a symbol of unity and remembrance. It stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of a soldier bear who, against all odds, etched his name in the annals of history, reminding us all of the power of friendship, courage, and the indomitable human and bear spirit. If you would like to dive deeper into the story of Wojtek, I recommend the following books. Wojtek the Bear, Polish War Hero, written by Eileen Orr. And there's a lovely children's book, Brothers in Arms, a true World War II story of Wojtek the Bear and the Soldiers Who Loved Him, by Susan Hood and Jamie Green. Now, if you would like, make your coffee and meet me at Coffee Corner. Hey, welcome to Coffee Corner. Um, let's see. My coffee for today is if you live in New England, you know that we're all um a little obsessed with Dunkin Donuts. There's like one on every corner. So, um that is my coffee tonight is uh, Dunkin Donuts original with my almond creamer. And um and it I said night, it is night and I'm having a coffee. That's may may not be such a great choice, but it's done. Anyway, um, what did you think of today's episode? I really enjoyed researching it um, because I learned a lot about that geographical area of the world and also the Syrian brown bear, um, which I didn't know anything about uh, before I researched on um, the Syrian brown bear. And I just, I got such a kick out of this story Um and the amazing effect that this bear had on all of these people from all these different countries um, just united everyone. Um, the human animal connection has always been a big part of my life. I remember when I was little, um, I just loved animals and real, to be honest, felt more of a connection with them than I did with people. Um, I just, I loved, I, I felt like I could communicate with them. Um, and there's actually pictures of me like three years old and having a nap and there's uh, cats and dogs just piled in with me. And, um, <laughs> to this day, I still just, just love animals, um, of all kinds. Um, my husband and I were made, uh, they, we raise emotional support cockapoos, um, and we place them, we place them, oh my gosh, goodness, in all kinds of special needs homes, um, with veterans and folks who struggle with anxiety and various mental health issues. And, um, we get all kinds of texts telling us, you know, how these dogs are helping them. Um, anxiety is coming down. Um, loneliness is coming down. And um, it's just really amazing what these dogs can do for people. Um, my daughter, who has special needs, is really bonded with her cat. Um, cat's name is Pumpkin. And um, this cat will run to her, sleeps right next to her. And very interestingly, um, will avoid her or keep away when she's about to have a seizure. Um, so I don't know if the cat, you know, is smelling something or sensing something, but I know if the cat won't go near her that there's about to be an episode. Um, so animals are just amazing. I just, I love hearing about stories of animals. And that brings me to, if you have a, a hero heart story about an animal, please send that in. That would be really fun to um, hear. So if you have something like that, please share it. Send it to Mindset Matters Podcast, numeral one at gmail.com. So that's Mindset Matters Podcast, all lowercase with no spaces, the numeral one at gmail.com. Big shout out to Frank, who has sent us one such tale um, about a dog in his community. So he writes, 
Hey, Mindset Matters. I have enjoyed your podcast and look forward to more episodes. I am writing to share a heartwarming initiative taking place at our local library that has brought smiles to the faces of many young readers. Twice a month, the library hosts a special reading program for children where they have the opportunity to read aloud to a charming companion named Baxter, who is a two-year-old standard poodle. My six-year-old daughter, Layla, is struggling on her reading journey. She has had the chance to read to Baxter, and it's amazing to see her plugging away with reading, but she's confident and has one arm slung over Baxter's neck. Our librarian shared that Baxter is a friendly, non-judgmental listener for kids to practice reading, and it's significant for young readers who may be hesitant or face challenges with their reading. With Baxter, they can read without the fear of judgment, allowing them to build confidence and a sense of enjoyment that often leads to a deeper love for reading. This wonderful reading program has already garnered a devoted following. Baxter's gentle and calm demeanor, coupled with his affection for children, make him the perfect companion for this task. I am so grateful to have this community initiative to inspire young readers like my daughter. The program has already gained tremendous popularity. Most of the available slots for the reading sessions with Baxter are reserved even before he's scheduled. One of the most remarkable aspects of this program is its inclusivity. Reading to Baxter creates a judgment-free space where children are free to read at their own pace and skill level. This experience serves as a source of encouragement and confidence building, all while Baxter relishes the companionship and the tales spun by young readers. I hope you have enjoyed this tale about a hero with a tale from Frank. Frank, thank you so much for sending that story. And I enjoyed that so much. And what great timing to go with our story about Wojtek, uh, the bear. As a past principal, this just dug my heart so good. I just love hearing about this type of thing happening in communities. Um, we had a lady who used to come into our school and she, her dog was a Vizsla. I had never met a Vizsla before, um, but this dog did a wonderful job reading with kids and they're kind of bigger dogs. And he would just lie down and he would let the kids sort of prop up against him and read to him. It's just, it's an amazing thing. So thank you for that uplifting story. I'm going to leave us today with a quote from Gandhi. It says, The greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to this episode. I hope you'll join us for the next one. It's going to be the hero heart story of Malala. Um, And then the one after that um, will be about, let me check my notes. After Malala is Sir Edmund Hillary. So thank you for joining us today, and I hope you make it a great one. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email mindsetmatterspodcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindset matters podcast the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.